over our recent years in history, we've had a lot of people come out with things in order to make money on books and things like this that uh, clearly have not done the research. Or if they have done the research, they have uh, intentionally misled the public in order to uh, either, one, serve the agenda of some higher power that wants to push whatever it is that they're selling for some reason, or two, uh, they've done it to, uh, you know, because people generally like drama. Uh, they like drama, and there may be some reason why they are pushing these particular issues, the alien uh, issue, which uh, they have turned into being these things called fallen angels, uh, these types of people, or the people that uh, um, over the recent years in history, I guess all the way back and probably until uh, the early um, like 500 or 600 AD or something when when Pope Gregory the Great came out with the word uh, Lucifer meaning something having to do with Satan which it doesn't because it's mentioned sarcastically uh, in regards to a Babylon king which is identified as a man later on in Isaiah and since Lucifer is only mentioned one time in the Bible it cannot mean anything associated to Satan and these types of things have happened over history the things that we're going to talk about today is the name Nephilim and what it really means and where it comes from because now we have people associating Nephilim to reptilians. Reptilians was pretty much promoted by uh, David Icke and people like that and it's turned into this huge thing and now Nephilim means uh, reptilians, it means fallen angels, it means uh, any alien that you see in the sky. You know, you see some of these people that say all aliens are demons and stuff like that. These are the crazies that are out there that don't want to spend any time doing any research at all, but they want to make up these fabulous stories um, because they, you know, they promote drama and people just like drama. So we're going to talk about the word Nephilim today, but before we begin, we're going to take a look at this right here, which is called Strong's Concordance. And it's very important because what it does is it goes into the Bible and tells you what particular words mean. So if you use the King James Bible, for instance, uh, as you go through the Bible, you can actually take a look at the meanings of the particular words that are used because they are derived from Hebrew words. When we take a look in the Old Testament, for example, uh, they're derived from Hebrew words. So here it is. So Strong's Exhaustive Concordance of the Bible, generally known as Strong's Concordance, is a concordance of the King James Bible that was constructed under the direction of Dr. James Strong in 1822 to 1894, and first published in 1890. Dr. Strong was professor of exegetical theology at Drew Theological Seminary at the time. It is an exhaustive cross-reference of every word in the King James Bible back to the word in the original text. Unlike other Bible reference books, the purpose of Strong's Concordance is not to provide content or commentary about the Bible, but to provide an index to the Bible. This allows readers to find words where they appear in the Bible. This index allows the student of the Bible to refine a phrase or passage previously studied. It also lets the reader directly compare how the same word may be used elsewhere in the Bible. In this way, Strong's Notes provides an independent check against translations and offers the opportunity for greater and more technically accurate understanding of text. Strong's Concordance includes the Hebrew root words, and this is for the Old Testament. And it's important to understand that the Old Testament does not belong to the Catholic Church. They took over the Old Testament and they put it in their Bible. But the Old Testament belongs to uh, the Hebrew a long time ago. And so when we take a look at the words and the definitions in the Old Testament, it has nothing to do with what the Catholic Church or the modern church believes. It has to do with what they believed when they wrote the Old Testament a long time ago. And these certain words that are used in there are derived from certain Hebrew words. James Strong did not construct Strong's Concordance by himself. It was constructed with the effort of time of more than a hundred colleagues. It has become the most widely used concordance for the King James Bible. So there you go. So when we take a look, for example, in the Bible, we're going to be taking a look at the word Nephilim. For those of you who believe that you should only be reading the King James Bible, well, then you have nothing to worry about because the word Nephilim is never in the King James Bible. In fact, the word Nephilim is substituted for giants. If you take a look here, we see the word Nephilim in the New International Version. 
And it says in those days and for some time after, giant Nephilites, okay? And then it says the Nephilim were on the earth in those days on the English Standard Version. We see in the New American Standard Bible the Nephilim were on the earth in those days. And in the King James Bible, we see there were giants in the earth in those days. So the word Nephilim and giants are used interchangeably here. The Nephilim were on the earth in the, both those days, and Nephilim were on the earth. So in King James Bible, specifically, folks, there is no mention of Nephilim. So then we have to understand what does the word giants mean in the King James Bible. Now, in order to find the word Nephilim, and I'm using the eSword uh, Bible application here. It's got all of the um, books of the Bible here. And you'll notice here up at the top, I've got Old Testament where it's being searched. We're going to search for Nephilim in the whole Bible here. And we'll find that when doing a search, it's only in two places. Those two places are both in the Old Testament. So let's take a look here at Genesis 6-4. And what you see right here in green are the various definitions for what these things mean, what these various words mean. These are derived from the translations of Hebrew so when they put giants here in the translation, we can actually see the definition of what they mean from, a, from the Hebrew when it was translated into the Bible. Right here we have a parallel. And we can see the various Bibles that I have loaded here inside Esword. And it says, there were giants in those days and also after that when the sons of God came on to the daughters of men and they bear children with them. But when we take a look at the other ones, for example, when we take a look at the other ones, and in those days and for some, some time after, giant Nephilites lived on earth for whenever the sons of God had intercourse with women. So it's not putting the Nephilim in the same context as the people who actually had intercourse with the women. It, said that, it says that they lived on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man, so they're not, the, they're not the same as the sons of God. Otherwise it would say the Nephilim came into the daughters of men and they didn't. It's saying it's mentioning two different things in the same sentence. But I digress there. Let's take a look at the definition of what the Nephilim actually is. Now, since it's not listed in the King James Bible, we have to go with what they give us as their interpretation, and that is giants. And when we take a look at H503, or excuse me, H5307, it says, from H5307, properly a feller, that is a bully or a tyrant. So the giants that are being referred to have nothing to do with aliens, reptilians, uh, angels or anything of the sort. They're referring to giants meaning tyrants or bullies, kind of like what we're dealing with today, kind of like the, uh, the large corporations and things like that. And it may very well be possible that they are trying to misdirect people uh, in some instances so that they can't associate what's happening here to what is actually happening today. If you are a true Christian and you actually read the King James Bible uh, and you are interested in really knowing what's going on, why would you accept anything different than what's actually being shown here in the Bible? If you enjoy the drama, then you're, you're definitely not uh, defining things correctly. Um, and so what good is that for you if you're not going to trust what the Bible is giving you? seems to me is that you're lukewarm what they call Christians in the Bible. You believe what you want to believe when you want to believe it. The fact is is that the word Nephilim means tyrant or bully and it's clearly marked right here as the word in the definition using the Strong's word concordance. So there you go. I hate to break the news to you folks, but Nephilim has nothing to do with aliens or fallen angels or anything. Also, there also there is no place in the Bible whatsoever in any of the translations that you will find 
the word fallen angel. I type in fallen angel here. And we'll just look in King James, for example. We have in Revelation 14.8, and there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen. That's the only place in the whole Bible we have fallen angel in the King James Bible. So all these are made up terms. Uh, the fact that Nephilim are aliens or reptilians or alien greys. And by the way, if they were alien greys, alien greys are smaller than the average person, so they can't be giants anyway. So even if you want to objectify it into some kind of materialistic type of thing and try to turn them into something that they're not, it still doesn't make sense because it's not logical. Well, as far as the Book of Enoch goes, there's no place in the Book of Enoch that it mentions Nephilim. It mentions watchers, but that, just like Lucifer, you can't just all of a sudden take that and associate it to something in the Book of Enoch either. So all of this is made up crap, folks. And if you are a real and true Christian, you would follow what's in the Bible and follow the definitions in the Bible and not follow the hype. You guys take care. I'll talk to you soon.